right. Oh yeah, right, this is a little job, just taking on something a bit different for our penny pit stop. Because uh, we're doing the, the, the general bits and pieces on the Triumph. Been out for a little ride today, and I'm sitting in the lights and I watched, when Penny's going for the levers, she's right fingertip close, the levers a little bit too far away from the bar. Come on in with the camera there. Now, that's the standard bar span that you're gonna get. We've got Oxford heated grips, which are a tiny bit thicker than your average grip, so that takes up a bit of your hand and pulls it away a little bit because it's thicker, it moves it away from this lever. So you need the lever to be a bit further. Now yes indeed, we've got adjustable levers as standard on Triumph, which is better than Harley that don't have them. Number one there is the highest setting, and you move the wheel around, that's that distance right out there, and you come all the way around to number four, which is the lowest, and that's right in there. But when you take a look at this, show us your hand, Penny. That's how Penny Pit stops hands, look. <laughs> Penny has hands like the borrowers. And yes, boys, I've heard all the jokes, <laughs> believe me. Um, and to get this further in, a few people have said in the past that they can heat this and bend it in. You know, I can't recommend anything on your bike to do less than heat this cast alloy uh, lever and bend it, because it is a cast alloy lever. It just isn't malleable enough to bend. It isn't made of the right material, and it will snap. If it doesn't snap when you're trying to bend it, it will snap when you try and use it because remember heating any metal up and cooling it down again is going to have an effect on it. Uh, there's the process of annealing and hardening and also you can get involved in all that but cast alloy just doesn't lend itself to being heated. It just doesn't. And yes we all know you drop your bike over on its side, you bash that bobble on the end and it bends round nicely. Try bending it back. All you'll do is remove it. It's as simple as that. And when they bend round, they go round because they've been whacked hard. It's a, it's a quick, sharp bang, and it just bends them a bit. Sometimes they break off. Most of the time, they break off. So you cannot bend the lever. How can we get it further in? Now, short of buying what Penny had on the Harley, which is a very expensive set of Oberon levers, try and take a little look in there. This is how these levers work. That's a little, uh, a little post or stump inside there. And this is a, uh, a wheel, and inside Put those tools down. Inside this wheel is a cam, like a, uh, an, ex, uh, an eccentric camshaft inside, or eccentric cam uh, drum inside there. So on the number one position, it's at its thickest point, so it rests against this post. On the number four, so it goes two, three, four, and that's its very lowest, so it's progressively lower all the way around. It's a little square cam in there. But that's still not close enough, and we need to get pennies in a bit closer. So here's a little trick for you. You don't have to go buying expensive levers. These levers are really good quality, and believe me or not, I'll show you something. Can you come right here, Pat? Suzuki Bandit. Same lever. That brake lever is, uh, I was gonna say unanimous, that's the wrong word, isn't it? Universal. Universal. See, that's why we have Penny. <laughs> that's universal to about 20 different bikes. It really is, right across the brands as well, folks. So this isn't a Triumph lever, this is just one of the best levers on all bikes. And they are very, very much universal, as Penny puts it. So, I'll show you how the anatomy of it works. You've got a little lock nut underneath, which you just remove. And then there's a little oily post, comes out there, it's like a little uh, cotter pin you might call it that just sits there and they're quite oily because they've been greased inside now to get this off there's a little spring inside there before that spring goes ping and disappears into another dimension the way of getting it off is come down come out a little bit so you're off the end of the peg come down jiggle jiggle like that 90 degrees so you're hanging 90 degrees downwards and then wriggle that off the end of the spring and if you look up underneath you see the spring there mm -hmm. Now the spring is captive in there, but only by pressing it in. It's not welded or pinned or anything else. It won't fall out, but just make sure it's there. And it just sits in that little recess there. So that's its place to sit like that. You pop it in that way and then you put it up, offer it up underneath. So now we've got this off and out of the way, you can see in there, here's the little can. That's the number one, very shallow. Two, getting deeper, three and four, that's the deepest one, and that's the one that Penny's using, but isn't still low enough. So, common sense, as I always say folks, I'm here for thinking, this little post is what the cam bears against, this little post here. And the difference between one and four 
in the depth of those holes in the cam is about two or three mil. So don't go getting a grinder on the end of that. All you need is a file. I'm just going to file. Probably, I'm going to file that flat. If you look at the amount of curvature in the end of that, there's obviously a, a um, an ellipse on the end, and that's about a three mil ellipse. So I'm going to file that flat completely till it's like a a flat peg rather than an ellipse, and that will have taken three mil off it. So let me just do that first. Right, there we are. Now we should, hopefully. Now, like I said, there's a little recess that the spring sits in, and the spring pokes out the front. Look at that. Let's get in from here. So you just got to get that spring into that recess, and you just wriggle it and it pings in. There it is. Then lever it up through 90 degrees. Pop that in. Hold for a sec. And now this is the final assembly, so I'm going to put a little bit of soft copper grease on this cotter pin, just to give it a good chance. It stops them wearing, and it's better than regular grease because it doesn't kind of disappear. And that will take, take it through. Put a little pin back in, and then your nut underneath. And that's a lock nut under there, so that's just a simple 10mm lock nut, wrist tight. Don't know the torque setting, I haven't looked it up, but it doesn't need much. There it is, right. Copper away, wipe off the excess. And there we are, look at that difference. How much closer is that? So just as a comparison left to right, that's the one we haven't done yet. That's the peg that we filed down. And it does come free, you can see the end of the peg quite clearly there. And it's this gap on number four, which is the smallest setting, it's that gap between there we're looking to reduce. And on the other side, we've managed to achieve is that. That's now probably half, if not a little bit less. Don't file it off until the body of the lever hits the body of the clamp. That's far, that's far too much and it won't work. You'll, you do need a little bit of adjustment there, you do need the peg to hold the cam, otherwise the cam just spins around. But that's reduced. Now, pop your hand on that with a glove on pen. Now, obviously gloves make your hands thicker as well, but now you've got pulling here with the inside of the fingers, instead of pulling with the end of your fingertips, no, which cool. you are. So that's a lot safer, especially with the brakes, and it's a lot more comfortable, especially in traffic where you're on and off the levers all the time. So there we are folks, a little ghetto fix for your levers. If yours aren't far enough in, don't ever try and bend this. Honestly, it's just the most stupid and ridiculous things to do. These are control levers, especially with the brakes. Uh, just take that little pin and file it down. That one in there, easy. Don't use a grinder either, because you're only taking about four mil off. Okay, um, there we go. If you have any problems, let me know. It's very simple to do. If you bugger up the pin, it's not hard to fix it, because all you've got to do is take it out and then just take the end of a bolt. You can thread that little hole. You can thread a bolt in there, just a small five mil bolt, and cut it off to the right length and then round the end and use that so they're even replaceable. Okay, hope you like that. A little bit of fun for you. Ghetto fix for your levers. Still Boys Garage. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.